This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From beautiful design templates and custom domains to full-blown e-commerce, email campaigns, powerful analytics, and now scheduling that you can set up in minutes, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I want to update my three and a half year old video on the best teleprompter under $150 by sharing with you what I think is the best teleprompter under $150 now in June 2020. In fact, I think the two best teleprompters in the market under $250, maybe more. Meet what I'll call PromptBox 2.0 ABS and PromptBox 2.0 Metal, now designed for larger tablets than the original. I'll put the actual SKUs, what do we call them, SKUs, down in the show notes below. But before I get into it, a few quick announcements. First, I want to let you know that we are now offering one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions covering everything from portfolio reviews to gear selection and how to get your home studio for YouTubing up and running. I want to thank those of you who've already engaged with us one-on-one -on -one this way. Guys, really, I'm so happy you're so happy with the results. If this is of interest to the rest of you, please visit www.3bmep.com slash booking to learn more or go on to actually book an appointment. Second, yay, we only have a few copies left of the limited edition first run of Streets of New York, the book. This is 82 pages of street photography and street portraiture I've taken in my favorite city on earth, home of my birth over the two years just preceding the pandemic. If you miss New York City like we do, I think it's a great place to get your fill. If you'd like your signed copy of the book, please visit www.3bmep.com slash books to order now. Finally, as always, if you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation down in the comments section below because you guys are terrific. And please consider using our no cost to you affiliate links in the show description. Even better yet, join us on Patreon. However you support our work, really, we thank you for it. Let's get to it. Right, three and a half years ago, I named the original prompt box the best teleprompter on the market under $150. The reason I did so is because I was in the market for a prompter and it kicked I'll put a link to that review in the show notes down below. Though, for those of you who have never learned where the show notes are, they're just past the video title as you scroll below the video where you then should click on more. The prompter wasn't for me per se, but for a commercial project where we felt the on-screen talent would benefit from a relaxed but scripted approach. Like this. Most people assume that when something happens, you react by feeling whatever you feel, and that's it. There's just two steps. But that's not it. There's really three steps. Yes, something happens, and yes, you react with whatever you feel, but there's a middle step. And that's the place where we work. And that's where you make the changes you need. The prompt box stood head and shoulders above everything else out there, handily meeting all of my criteria, except for one. So let's do a quick review of those criteria as they remain the same in June 2020. And the new models match the original tick box for tick box. First, duh, it had to work. It had to make the screen, in my case an iPad Mini 3, legible. The prompter itself, independent of the screen with which it could be used, had to be designed to offer good control of ambient light from all directions so that there were basically no reflections nor stray light to reduce contrast. It had to be able to do this without obscuring or blocking the camera controls, as cloths often can. Second, it had to be portable, really portable. It had to be sized appropriately, as small and light as possible, consistent with using what I consider to be the ideal format for what we do, beyond the screen, any camcorder or hybrid camera. At that time, this meant our Sony A6300. Not just small and light, but ideally foldable, set up and take down in seconds, no screws to lose. And I wanted it to fit into my existing travel or location kit, like my Peak Design 20L or Low Pro Protactic 250. Portable also meant, to me anyway, no requirement for a second tripod or light stand. Third, it had to be affordable, not a thousand bucks, not 500, not 250 if I could avoid it. Fourth, it had to be robust. Now, 
again, the original prompt box ticked all the boxes except for folding up without assembly and quite fitting in my backpack, but it came close. An extra 90 seconds each for setup and takedown was doable, and the end results delighted our client and us. I'll put a link to that review in the show notes down below as well. The more important point for many of you, I suspect, is that the original worked so well that I started using it for all of my YouTube talking head videos, just as I suspect you might because you're watching this. I continued using it, except when I was in the field or in conversations, of course. That is until my iPad Mini 3 just died and repair was not an option. But before I get into that, I want to give the good folks at Squarespace a shout out. With their elegant layouts, click drag and drop interface, customization tools, excellent support and more, Squarespace makes it a cinch for photographers and content creators, really any small to mid-sized businesses in any industry, to have an outsized presence on the web. And that has never been more important than now. Squarespace can literally have you up and running in minutes with a beautiful website and custom URL tailored to the way you want to present yourself. They really understand what it takes to build your online identity and grow your business. When you're ready to move beyond your basic site, Squarespace has you covered with their fully integrated and extensible platform. We know. Not only do we use Squarespace for our production company, blog, documentary, and personal photography sites, but we've integrated email blasts into commerce. We book our street photography workshops, sell our Streets of New York book, and just now have set up scheduling for those new one-on-one -on -one live video sessions I mentioned earlier all through Squarespace. It just works. Not a systems admin in sight. Which doesn't mean I don't have questions, but again, Squarespace's customer service is terrific. So, hop over to squarespace.com slash hue for a free trial. And get an extra 10% off your first website or domain purchase when you're ready to really give it a go by using the discount code HUE at checkout. Again, that's squarespace.com slash HUE and discount code HUE at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. Anyway, this is when I learned the Mini 5 was just big enough to not fit easily in the original and belatedly realized that this was why the original had been superseded by a slightly larger all-plastic, you could call it Lego-like affair, that simply isn't as elegant or light as the original. And yes, I'm talking about this one, the ABS, but personally, I could care less that it's made out of ABS or that it's a little bigger and heavier. It's still under $150 and still the best on the market at anywhere near the price. Hold that thought. It fits my Mini 5 or other similarly sized tablets. It now requires no screws for assembly, which is a big deal for someone like me because I tend to lose the fiddly bits. And I've simply learned to either leave the prompter at home when I go on the road for my personal work or just carry it and shut up when I'm doing commercial work. Now, Promptbox has just added the metal version. And I confess, given what I just said, I slightly prefer the metal one. It's a little more elegant. It's a little lighter. It packs down a little smaller. But most importantly, like the original and unlike the ABS model, you load or unload your tablet from the top. This is much better if you're using it for YouTubing but also easier if, say, your camera is particularly tall or you've attached anything to the hot shoe like a uh, Rode Wireless Go or XLR adapter. See what I mean? In either case, I can use my existing setups for attaching the prompt box to any of my cameras or cameras that come in, so let's shift our focus to how you do that with yours. What I didn't do back three years ago, and still don't do today, is configure the prompt box quite the way the manufacturer intended, as in, not at all, starting with turning it upside down. I threw away the bracket, choosing instead to use about $300 worth of other components, most of which I already had in-house. Now, you might ask, why on earth would you do that? I have a really good answer. I wanted setup and takedown to be quicker and easier. Once you put this on, you can't change anything unless you take it off. I wanted it to be better balanced. Hold that thought. 
Most importantly, I wanted to be able to use a teleprompter with a wide array of lenses and camera bodies that would come in for evaluation from time to time. The fact is, from lens diameter to distance from the bottom of the lens mount to the bottom of the camera, the variability is so great that being able to adjust height and distance from the prompter quickly without fuss is critical to someone like me. I wanted the combined weight of the setup to be as evenly distributed as possible ahead of and behind the point where it would attach to a single tripod. And the bracket setup, like this, makes me queasy. I know firsthand what it's like to have your camera crash to the floor from just this kind of imbalance. Nor did I want to tempt the fates. By placing excess stress on the quarter inch 20 screw of the quick release plate, I'd attach to the bottom of the prompter. This also meant that if I couldn't balance the setup as evenly as I'd want, at the very least, I wanted the heaviest and could have the most expensive part of the kit, camera and lens, directly over or nearly directly over the center of the tripod. See? But this is completely unnecessary if you will consistently use a single small camera lens combo like, say, this Sony a6400 with the Sony 28mm f2. If that is the case, the bracket available from Promptbox for either model is fine. It's simple, workable, and 300 bucks cheaper than how I attach the Promptbox to our cameras. Though you'd probably still want to invest in a few rubber washers to avoid scratching the bottom of the plate of the camera if you go this way. Still, if you're like me, you may want to do it the way I do it, so let's explore that. First, I start with Sockler's Ace base plate as the foundation. It's currently selling for about $200. I like small rig gear a lot. This is really quality fabrication at excellent prices, so I rely on a pair of small rigs, 15 millimeter rods. The 9-inch one's about 20 bucks. I then attach the small rig 942 super lightweight 15 millimeter LWS rod bracket v3 for another 10 or 12 bucks because i'm building a quick release system for the prompt box that speeds setup and takedown i insert quarter inch 20 screw through the pre-drilled holes into small rigs s lock quick release mounting device 1855 another 35 or so finally i add a nice fat rubber donut from sockler's donut set for their ace mat box for another 25 and call it a day although i don't have the flexibility to do it when i use this bracket Now, if the lens diameter is large enough so that this isn't possible, your basic black t-shirt will do in a pinch and still leave the controls there easy to use. You may find you need a riser block in either case, something like uh, this. I've got them on both. And uh, if you're like me, you've got something like that lying around. The end result is a fast, elegant, robust, flexible, lightweight, relatively well-balanced, and very light sealed kit. In fact, I put it up against teleprompters costing a pile more. I have. But if you are using a Panasonic GH5 in particular, as we now do, having switched from the Sony as our A-cam, there is a particular issue of which you ought to be aware. And that is the fact that the tripod socket on the GH5's battery grip, this is so odd, does not align with the optical axis of the lens. Put differently, when you attach a GH5 with grip to any base plate or quick release plate of which I'm aware, it doesn't properly align with the rod system, which makes it impossible to use with any rod system, which means you can't use it with any prompter or mat box, which doesn't offer lateral adjustment, and I've never seen that. Which is why I switched, again just for the GH5, from the Sockler base plate to Small Rig's 2024 Advanced Half Cage Kit. This is a $120 item for the GH5 with battery grip that recenters the two in line with both the lens's optical axis and thus the rod system. It's our go to setup for on location interviews, allowing us to hot swap batteries without interrupting the flow of conversations. This has proven very important time and time again. Yeah, that's kind of it. Though, before you ask in the comments section, let me answer what I suspect will be the three most often asked questions. One, can it be used with a smartphone? Yes, it comes with a plastic insert, which you can put the phone on top of, whether it's Android or iPhone, doesn't matter. Two, is the prompt box better than a $99 Parrot? Yes, but this is primarily because you shouldn't use a smartphone in the first place because it's way too small for good prompting. End of story. Three, 
what teleprompting software should be used with it. Well, I happen to use Teleprompt Plus 3, and I use my iPhone connected via Bluetooth to control it. That way, if I mangle my words, which inevitably I do, I can back up for another take without leaving my seat or standing here, making the ensuing flow transition pretty seamless. And that really is it. Thanks again to Squarespace.com for making this episode of Three Blind Men and an Elephant possible. For all of your website needs, if you're a small or mid-sized business, a solopreneur, Squarespace is the place to go. Get your free, no-strings-attached 14-day trial at www.squarespace.com. And if at the end you decide you really love it and are ready to go for it, save 10% by using the discount code HUE at checkout.